Hey, well, kids. Over here. No, 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 not over there. Here, here. Hey, hi. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Found something already. How are you doing? Are you good? Well, that's awesome. Now, today we're doing something really exciting because we are going on a bug blitz. Now, bug blitz or nature blitz is something where what we're going to do is we are going to map, make a map of our outside space. So you could do it at your preschool in your garden. You can make a map of um, your home garden. You can make a map when you go for a walk in the park where you live. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just going into the little bit of woods behind where I live. And I'm going to show you what you can do. And you can find some bugs and you find the plants. And you, what you're doing is making a list of all the different species of trees, all the different species of flowers, all the different species of insects, all the different species of animals or animal sign that you can find it's really really cool and then you can like you know, save it for different times of the year because springtime is when there's lots and lots and lots of life coming out because everything's getting warm and there's lots of bugs flying around and this is a perfect time to actually see some really really cool stuff so talking of cool stuff have a look at this i've got my pooter do you remember these the pooter I'm going to actually do a diagram for you educators on how to make one of these and I'm going to send it out. But all it is is a spice jar, a couple of bits of tube, a little bit of uh, mus muslin or cloth over one of them because one tube you suck on and this one you put over a bug to suck it up into your inspection jar. So you don't have to spend lots and lots of money on these things. You can make these as well. Just a couple of holes in the top. But anyway, I digress. Now, so all you beautiful people um, who usually... Earl McDonald says good morning. Who, who says good morning? Earl McDonald. Hey Earl, how you doing? Uh, they uh, say good morning Trevor and Rachel. What a beautiful day for, for a walk from Ariel and Lucy. Ariel, Lucy, it's amazing today. We're going to get you doing something at home for this afternoon as well. You're going to love this. But come over here and look at this. Look what I found already. So I'm just here playing hide and seek. And what we're going to do is we're going to document because down here, look, look at these guys. Can you get in there, Alex? It's not Rachel today, it's my son, Alex, who's a brilliant, super duper editor and cameraman. Hello. And he does all of my edits, because he's very clever. So using the pooter, what I can do, I'm gonna put the tube, the non the uh, non sucky bit, over the termites and Uber. Suck them up and look, see all the dust in there? And now we can see the termites in here. There we are, there they are, look. And we can look at them a bit better. And because we've sucked them up, just using air, because they're incredibly light, so they're not gonna get hurt. And they come into the jar like that, and we can look at them and go, ooh, yeah, yeah, interesting, termites, wicked. And then what we can do, because you can undo the lid, what's this? Super genius. And you put them back exactly where you found them. So, hang on, oh, there's one there. Let's just get you off there, guys. Come on, off you get, otherwise. You don't want to be uh, going back to my house because uh, you'll get lonely. Now, brilliant. Okay, so first things first, we're going to mark what we find. I'm going to do a list and then I'm going to show you a map that I've made earlier as well, um, earlier over at the end of our walk where we're going to put everything out. So I've written termites in my handwriting where I should have been a doctor. Now, remember when you turn things over, always turn them back. Now, hi Marissa and all the kids at Orchard, how you doing? You good? So I say hello. <laughs> it's gonna be brilliant today. Now, I've got lots of inspection jars. I've got lots of um, paper to do drawings maybe or writing lists. Oh look, <laughs> back down here again, we've got a jumping spider. So I'm gonna put a spider on the list as well. Where's he gone? Here he is. He's hiding from me because he's super scared or he's super fast. Here we go, see that? There he is, look. Don't have to move too far, a little stripy jumping spider. I don't know if you got that, Al. Yeah, I got it. Don't awesome. Worry. Cool. Now, it's not just the bugs we're looking at, we're looking at the trees as well. And look at this beautiful angophora here. Now, the blood gum. I love these trees. 
they're really amazing and they just seem to have such a brilliant way of like growing everywhere so these massive roots marissa says hello from orchard st ives hi orchard crew how are you are you good all right sit down at the back pay attention thank you crisscross applesauce cross your legs yes of course sit at the back thank you now this is Yangofra, this beautiful red, beautiful colour. It's got some bugs that have been growing in it as well, this big zigzag here. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take a piece of the bark like this. Look at those colours, isn't that beautiful colour? And I'm going to put it in my bag, in my adventure sack, and we are going to put that on our map. And I'll show you that later. Come with me. Now you could, anything on the floor, I always say is fair game, but you always be careful when you're picking up so you're not disturbing any bugs and insects. So this banksia, this old banksia, look at all the um, flowers. These have all gone over. This has been pollinated. And that's gonna be in my next uh, lesson back about um, pollination and cross pollination. Cause pl I keep telling you, don't I? Plants are clever. And they make all these beautiful, wonderful flowers that we smell and see at this time of year, all to get pollinated to make seeds to make more trees and this banks here has done that over the last couple of years so this is the flower of it but we don't need to pick up that one what i'm going to do is see if i can find one on the floor and we'll use this there's one over here look this one on the floor we're just going to pick up this we don't have to break the tree if we don't want to well we shouldn't break trees should we it's just not the right thing to do so sometimes taking a flower sometimes if you use scissors and don't break it is is okay but it's best to find the things on the floor. And what we can also do is, to show what it is, is take the relief. So we're gonna put those in the bag too. Let's just put these in the bag while I'm getting all a bit discombobulated because I've got all these things to, I get so excited, don't I? I get a bit excited about all the stuff that I see, but I just love it. Nature's amazing. So, we've got a leaf. And we've got a flower from this old man Banksia here. Now it's called an old man Banksia because all of its bark is all old and wrinkly, like an old man's skin, a bit like mine. Hehehe, <laughs> because I'm an old man. Should we go over here? Come on. Oh, there's another Banksia here, and we've got. Oh, look. Here we go. This is a. This is an, another Angophora, but it's a baby one. So it's just it's doing really well. This one's gonna. This one's gonna make it, which is awesome. You know, there's over 300 different sorts of gum tree in Australia. 300. Not 300 trees, 300 different sorts of gum tree. They're all like related and cousins and stuff. Now here, look, I'm going to take a bit of this because we can take a seed off of here because these are, these are okay to take off. This is a she-oak. I've shown you these before, but because we're making a map, I'm going to take a couple of bits, take a couple of the leaves, old brown ones. Look, not the green ones, just the old brown ones because these are finished. See, I wouldn't take the ones down here, look. See, I wouldn't take these ones because these are all, all, all young. They feel beautiful. It's always good to, you can always touch the trees and you can actually feel what they're like as well because they feel lovely. Now, let's put these bits in here. Oh, all these things I'm gonna be putting on a map, like I said, but we keep finding stuff and I'm going, oh, because you document everything. So, for example, over here, we can take these bits of old leaf from this banksia here. This is the hairpin banksia. And these are a beautiful bright orange in the spring, um, early spring and uh, late winter. And they've gone over now because they've been pollinated by the, um, by the bees and the butterflies and the flies that come in there. And that's why they've changed over like that. The tree isn't ill, it's just the flowers have done their job. Because everything in nature has a job. All the flowers that are there for a reason. And talking of things that have a reason, look at this, this is fungus, look at this. Plate fungus here. And flies, I'm gonna write down, oh, there's a fly. So you, everything you hear and see, you document. That's the brilliant thing about these maps. So flies, yep, lots of flies, brilliant stuff. Now this red fungus here, look. Now this is a really old, broken bit of dead tree. It's fallen over in a storm. And the fungus lives inside. It lives inside all trees, but they usually, um, find it off but this one's just starting to come out this plate fungus here and that beautiful color orange what a beautiful orange that is Isn't that amazing and that will slowly but surely break everything down and make all the wood a bit rotten and soft and that means that the bugs and insects can actually go in there and they can actually eat they'll get some nutrition out of this like us eating our vegetables do you eat vegetables do you eat your veg 
I hope so, because that's what makes you big and strong. Now, I'm going to take that bit. Look, that bit's broken off. So I'm going to take that little bit of plate fungus. It's called a plate fungus because it looks like a plate. And it's very light. It's very interesting. It's quite dry, this one. So this one's gone. So I'm going to take that and we're going to use this for our map too. Okay. Now, walking around here, we've got lots of other flowers. Look at all oh, these beautiful ones. I'm going to mark these. Mark these. I'm not going to pick these because there's only a couple left. Look at that. Isn't that a weird, scribbly, wibbly, wobbly flower? Isn't that beautiful? And the leaves are gorgeous. Now, down here, look, have a look down here, guys, because sometimes you get leaves down at the bottom that are old and finished. And these guys here, I'm going to just take, see the little ones there? Quite, they're quite, quite fat, fat leaves and juicy. But that's an old leaf there. I'm just going to take the one leaf, just taking the one. Because then, oh, it's got had a bug on the back of it. Look. See that? That was a bug's home. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to take that leaf, and that's going to go on our map too. Okay, let's put it in my uh, very full backpack. Now, over here, as we're walking around, there's lots and lots of grasses to look at as well. So take some grass. Take a few grasses. Now, grass is really clever. Because usually, you know when you see grass in the field, it's like usually really short down here, like this stuff, look. Now this belongs to the same family, but because plants know that their seeds need to get blown far away, so that plants can, um, all their babies can grow further and further a, 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 away from the, like the, the mummy or daddy plant, they grow these really, really long stems. And then they use the wind. They use the wind. How do plants know that the wind is useful? I don't know either. They're geniuses. Plants are clever. I keep telling you. And educators, in my latest uh, lesson pack, in the um, my Wild Kids lesson plans, there's lots and lots of things about um, wind. Um, there's a whole template on making kites and everything as well. So if you're interested in that, drop me a line and I can uh, send you the link on how to get hold of uh, our Wild Kids lesson packs as well. Anyway, so I'm going to take some of this grass because the seeds have gone from these. Thank you very much, Mr. Grass. Now, come on, Alex, let's go. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, these are grass trees. I'm going to take a couple of these. Now, these are baby grass trees. Now, these are really interesting because they can they grow really, really tall and they're really strong. And like First Nations people used to use these a lot for making matting and lots and lots of other things. So it's a really useful uh, material to use when you're out in the bush, when you're doing kind of like living it, like out in the wilds. Um, you can use lots of these things as well. Come on, let's go. Now there's lots of rocks. So I might, let's have a look under, we'll have a look at some of the things underneath these in a minute. Let's just get up here where there's some, not some, oh, let's have a look over here, see if we can find anything. Oh, there's some lichen here. Look, that's a plant. That's lichen. Lichen's one of the oldest plants in the world. And they were around when the dinosaurs were here. Uh -huh. Same as the big big uh, tree part, uh, ferns. Did you know that the sharks are actually before the dinosaurs? Oh, yeah. Sharks are way before the dinosaurs. Anything that lived in the ocean is way before the dinosaurs. Oh, look, we've got more termites here. Look, they're all in the shade Maybe down here. You didn't know that uh, sharks are technically older than trees. Sharks are older than trees? Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Sharks are older than trees. Sharks are clever. Sharks are really clever. Now, there's not very much going on here. There's a few ants going on. There's a few guys down here, look. So we can mark on our map that where there's a tree, there's some ants. And I'm going to take a stone as well because there's lots of, it's very rocky around here. So I'm going to take one of the stones, put that in the backpack as well. And that will mark where the stones are. Okay, let's put that in there. Drop my adventure stick. Okay, this is the perfect day to have an adventure stick. Now, let's go this way. There's another one of these beautiful grass trees. Another baby one, they're glorious things, absolutely glorious. And there's so many flies buzzing around here. There must be a lot of pollen in the air because there's so many big, big flies. There's hover flies and blow flies, but they're really difficult for us to show you on the camera, obviously, because uh, they're so fast. 
So we'll just have to, um, you have to hear them. You can hear them buzzing around the microphone, actually. There you go. Oh, he's landed on me. I think that was Barry. I think that might have been Barry the fly. He's quite big. He's, uh, he wants to be in uh, showbiz. Yeah, he does. Let's go. Now, let's have a look over here. So, oh, there's some, here's some interesting stuff. We've got some sandy stuff going on here where the, the, uh, all the, the rocks and that have been um, rubbed down and washed away. Let's have a look over here. Let's see, have a look under these rocks here and see what we got. Now, this is interesting because we've got some, like, little flowers here. Now, I'm going to take one of these because these flowers have gone over. And I'm going to put these. I've got some. I've got a whole heap of kit with me today. I've even got scissors. Now let's get one of my pots, and let's put that one there. Because that's something we'll do later. Let's have a look here. Now I've got my inspection pots as well. So you can use jam jars. You can use. Um, you can buy these, but these are really expensive. So like you know, jam jars, and that's recycling, isn't it? So jam jars are better. But I take these into when I go into preschools because it's got a magnifier on the top. Now, let's have a look under these stones here. Oh, ha ha! Yes, look at these guys, awesome! Now look, come and have a look at these. We've got some millipedes, stripy millipedes. And there's an ant here who's going, oi, what are you doing here? Get out of it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna rescue these guys. And we're gonna put these in this pot and we can inspect these and we'll take these. Oh, three of them together. I wonder if they're all related. There's an ant, he is not happy about them. Right, come on then. Come on. Come in there. There's loads of millipedes right? around these here. All stripy. Oh, look. See, look, because he's fallen over, now look what has happened. See, he's curled up like that. Now, I've shown you this before. Can you remember why? Who can remember why they curl up like that? That's right, yeah. They're, they're doing that to protect themselves. So they curl up in a ball because their backs are really really like strong and armor plated but their bellies and the underside of them is very very soft where all their legs are so let's just put you in there let's get you yes oh come on oh oh i'm going to call you carol carol the curly millipede and then let's get this one in here so look there we are three curled up millipedes and I wonder if they curl up like that to look like snails because they look like snail shells like that don't they very interesting and then what we can do is we can use the magnifier at the top to look inside can you see them there we got that not really oh well don't worry don't worry it's not a problem I'll just take the lid off and then you can see them a little bit better there you go How's that? Oh, McDonald says, uh, I mean, Ariel says, to protect themselves. Ariel, you are 100% correct. Give yourself a gold star. Woo yeah. Or a pat on the back, go like this. Well done, you. <laughs> now, the other thing you can do, when you're going around um, with your, um, all your adventure kit, you can have, have empty jars as well with you because what you can do, and I'll show you this because this is brilliant. You can get some flowers. I'm going to give that one a little snip and I'm going to put some flowers in here, just like that, see? And then I'm going to put a lid over it because you can shake it up. And you can get the smell of the flower. And you can walk around with your little pot of smell. And then when you're thinking about something, you can, rem you can close your eyes and, oh, that reminded me of what, when I went on that walk with Trevor. I didn't go for a walk with myself. That's weird, talking to the third person. Anyway, oh, it smells delicious. What a beautiful scent. And you can take that home with you and you can save that for your map. Okay, now let's go with those guys and Let's have a look for something else. You coming? Come on in. Right. So we found millipedes, we've found ants, we've found, what else have we found? That's right, yep, termites, well done, good remembering. And we found a fungus and we found grasses and we found leaves of a banksia. And then, ah, oh, 
Oh, these things, this makes me cross. Come and look at this. Oh. Look. Look at this. Look, the tree's broken. Someone's broke that. Someone's been really, really silly. Look, that should be, that belongs like that. Do you have any, like, string or tape? Well, you can. The, did you know, like, in Japan, people really look after their trees? And with old trees, what they do is bandage them up. Now, what I'm going to do later, I'm not going to do it now because it'll take too long, but I've got some sticky tape, and I'm going to wrap a little bit around it and see if that'll, that will come back. I don't know if it will, but and you can't leave it there for too long because I'm not using a natural material. Oh, I hate that. That's just being really lazy and people being really silly and they've just pulled that down. I don't know who's done that, but they haven't done a, a service to this tree at all. But what we will do is we'll take a little bit of this because these flowers are baronia flowers and they've actually gone over. When the flowers have done this, they would be curled out. When they've curled over like that, that means they've actually been pollinated and they don't need the bees anymore, so they've done their job. And that so means in that... in a way, it's okay because even though the branch has been dropped over, they've still pollinated and done their job? Right? No, no, because they won't be able to actually make seeds when they're down like that and broken. And this, is, this tree won't fix it, heal itself because there's big damage on it now. So this tree's always, always changed. So that's not very good. I don't like that. I don't like people who do stuff like that. It's very silly. So over here, we've got the same look. So this baronia here, you've got, see, see the flowers here when they're a little bit open? That one's gone over as well, but they'll curl over like this. That one there, you can just see it. There's a better example, look. See, this one's been pollinated and inside there is the swollen bit where the seed pocket is. Look here, look, you can see it here, look. See that green thing? That there, inside there are baby baronia seeds. Or baby baronia seeds, baby baronias in the form of seeds. Plants are clever, keep telling you. Now, right, anyway, back into the back into the fun and interesting stuff rather than looking at what crazy, lazy humans and stupid humans have done. Oh, something interesting. Come with this way. Not that. Over here, look. Now this, this is really interesting because this oh, is a termite nest that's fallen off of the top of the tree. If you look up, You'll see an old tree here, and up, straight up there, is the top end of the termite mound where all the termites would have been walking up the tree and they'd have gone up there and made their nest. But this one's got big and heavy, and too heavy, and fallen over. So, and fallen, fallen over, fallen down off of the tree. So we're gonna use this for the map. Come on. Now, so all these, all these things here, we can take different bits, but I've got, got, I've got, got bits of this already, so I'm not going to take any more. And then I'm going to show you, show you the map. Come with me. Come and have a look. So, so we've got more she oaks here, and we've got broom and stuff like that. We've got wild animals here. Hello, doggy. How are you? Great to see you. And then. Over here, I thought I'd make a map in one of my favourite spots. It's one of my favourite places. It's really, really nice. Come over here, look. So it's a nice, I've got a nice big open space to where I'm going to draw my map. I'm going over. I've got some paper down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some of the bits and pieces out. So we're actually right on the edge of a cliff. Oh, oh look at that. Look at that view. Isn't it amazing? Oh my goodness. So, so lucky. So, so lucky. So, you could do this bit. So you get a big bit of paper, okay? And you get a crayon or a pen or a pencil and you start to draw the area where you've been. So I've got the cliff here and then I've done these green little squiggles here because this shows the trees in the forest that all goes down here. So it's like so far that it's like so, so much to see that it's just too much to see. And I'm gonna get lost. So I'm not gonna do that. So what we can do is we can mark out where we found some things in our garden or where we've gone for a walk. So the last thing we found was the termites nest. 
So the termite nest can go about there. Okay, and then what we can do very quickly, this is only, I'm only going to do this very quickly. Next to the termite nest, we found our millipedes. So they can go there. And then all through, all through the bush, we found these tree grasses. And there's lots of those. So we can just put the leaves down just like this to demonstrate where we found them. Now, what else have we got here? <gasps> ah, who remembers what we found first after the termites? That's right. We found the banks here and that was all the way back here. So where we started the walk, I've started the walk here at the back of the, um, the back of the paper to you. And then what else did we find? Oh yeah, we found the baronia. Now these sorts of things, you don't have to, um, and they go, oh, there they go, look, the gang are off. Now what they're gonna do, it's because it's so warm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these back in here and put these guys back in the shade. They need to go in the shade because they don't like it hot. And what will happen is they will get too hot and they don't like it. So I'm gonna put them in the shade. There you go there. Come on then. There you are, Carol, go on, in you go. There we are. So I'm just gonna put these behind my bag in the shade. But if you had those at home or on a tray or something like that, you can have a really good um, like examine of them using a magnifying glass. But remember, always put them back where you found them, okay? So when you put them on the map, you can remember where you put them, can't you? And that's what we've got to do. So that's all we've got time for today. We've actually run out of time which is really, really, it's gone fast, isn't it? That's because it's having too much fun. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, carry on with my drawing because I've got some, there's an old dead tree over here that I'm just gonna mark as a yellow, yellow dead tree because he's not alive anymore. If he was alive, I'd call it green. Okay, so there we got there. And then I'm gonna do the path over here like this and do that as yellow, just so I know where I'm going. And then that goes all the way out to the cliff. So. Have fun making your exciting bug blitz, nature blitz, adventure map. Don't forget to keep sending me in your pictures. I love getting them, they're so good. And if you have any questions, you can get hold of me at wildkidsaustralia at gmail.com. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, and I'll see you really, really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Now, where were those termites?